two, one. All right. What is up, everyone? Checking it out. Check, check, checking it out. We are here on YouTube. Now, this is a special episode of the Stay at Home Open Mic. My name is Richie Marufo. I am the project director of the Barbed Wire Open Mic series. We are based out of El Paso, Texas in the U.S. Southwest. But since this is online, we've been able to connect with people from all over the world, from all over the country, from coast to coast. We get to travel internationally and visit people and their creative work. And today is a special episode. It is technically our 100th live streamed episode. Um, it just means a lot to be able to continue to do this. Uh, when we started, re when we returned to doing live open mics again, that was one of the questions a lot of people had. Are we still going to do this? And Obviously, we're still here. It means so much to have a, a space where, you know, anyone can just sign up and, and share something that they're working on. Uh, for whatever reason, there may be a lot of different reasons just to be part of a creative community, to share your writing, maybe share something new. Maybe you just felt like dusting a piece off and workshopping it for whatever reason. Or maybe you just needed to vent something that's true. Mondays happen. You know, the Mondays can be a cliche for a reason. Sometimes you just need to get Monday off your chest or whatever's going on in the world or in your personal life. Um, either way, we've made these great connections with people from all over the world and, of course, other organizations who do really great things as well in terms of writing, writing workshops, publishing. And I hope you guys get to hear it. So if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. Where have you been? We have a whole archive filled with 99 other episodes you can go check out. So if you really like this, you can go on our YouTube channel, go through our history. We have a whole a whole playlist dedicated just to the online open mics. We do have other types of programming and shows for you guys to check out as well. But, you know, you get to see uh, all the people here tonight have been here at least once before. We may have one or two new new people, newcomers. But if not, you know, you can go back. Kit, today's host, is someone who goes by each week and he adds timestamps. So it makes it a lot easier to navigate those past shows. So you can see, you know, oh, look at Hannah Alissimo performed at this time three weeks ago let me go check out that performance and these are all there so anyway as always though we do encourage participation so if you're watching you know let us know on the, in the live chat where are you where are you tuning in from say hello uh, i'll be there monitoring the live chat saying hi to you guys talking to you guys i saw donna snyder's already shout out to donna snyder nothing but love you know we always show her love even when she's not here at, at these online mics tumble words so lots of great things coming up as well i know that in april it's poetry month. As always, there's going to be workshops, but we also are, have a planned reading. Uh, so stay tuned for more on that. <sighs> Without further ado, just a few house housekeeping things. If you're not familiar, an online open mic is just like any other open mic. If you want to perform, if you want to share any of your creative work, all you have to do is sign up. Our sign up sheet usually goes online on our social media. So you can follow us if you aren't already on Barbed Wire Open Mic Series pretty much anywhere. If you type that in, we will show up. Barbed Wire Open Mic. You can also find us online as BWOMS, B-W-O-M-S. Um, you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on that little bell for notifications, every time I put up a new video, including the live streams, you will have first access to a list to sign up. So that's in the future. We have about 20 people signed up today. That's going to be a pretty great list. And as I mentioned, it's going to go from all over the place. People who signed up, you have about five to seven minutes to do your thing. We're a little bit more lax than a lot of other places, so feel free to use it. You don't have to either, right? You don't have to feel obligated to use it. Um, at the same time, though, let's be courteous of other people's times. Uh, so we'll, we'll just kind of be looking out for each other, as always, as long as we communicate with uh, each other. It's great. So my name is Rich. I'm the project director. Tonight, I am happy to hand over the baton to tonight's host. He's really come through. He's actually... One of the only two two other people other than me that have been here since day one on these on this online journey for barbed wire, uh, and since then he has really stepped up in so many ways. Hence why I have dubbed them many many names, including Bwam's legend, Bwam's icon. Uh, but tonight you just know him as Kit. He is our host. Let's go ahead and make some noise. Put your hands together. Throw some fire emojis in the chat. Let's go in here for Kit Ran. Take it away, man. Woo, <laughs> Kit. Hello, it's thank you, night. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, everyone. You know, it was almost two years ago that we were all very antsy from our monthly slate of events going from 12 to zero. And we decided to try something out. And 
it kept growing, it kept expanding. And here we are, we've hit triple digits. If this was an old, if this was a real TV show, we'd get syndication. That's where the real money is. But I'm so glad that it's brought all of us under the same tent and we're all together and don't really have the words for it, which is a confounding place to be as a writer. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, a cover poem as we do around here. I'm going to read Onset by Kim Adonizia. Watching that frenzy of insects above the bush of white flowers, bush I see everywhere on hill after hill, all I can think of is how terrifying spring is in its tireless, mindless replications, everywhere emergence. Seed case, chrysalis, uterus, endless manufacture, and the wrapped stacks of styrofoam cups in the grocery lately, I can't stand them. The shelves of canned beans and soups, freezers of identical dinners, then the snowflake diamond snowflake of the rug beneath my chair, rows of books turning their backs, even my two feet, how they mirror each other oppresses me. The way they fit so perfectly together, how I can nestle one big toe into the other like little continents that have drifted. My God, the unity of everything, my hands and eyes, yours. Doesn't that frighten you sometimes? Remembering the pleasure of nakedness and fresh sheets, all the lovers there before you, beside you, crowding you out, and the scouring griefs. Don't look at them all or they'll kill you. You can barely encompass your own. I'm saying I know all about you, whoever you are. It's spring and it's starting again. The longing that begins and begins and begins. It's Kim Adonizio, a favorite of mine, going to have a tumble words uh, on her works next month. But that's in the future. Let's take it back to the present with our first reader, one of our many far-flung friends uh, across the country, uh, hailing from New York City. We have Deadpan Lizzie. Deadpan Lizzie, please step up to the mic. Hi, thank you. I'm so honored to be opening. Congratulations on 100 shows. This is such a fabulous platform and I'm so happy it exists. Um, I'll read a couple poems tonight. I wrote one specifically for your platform. It's a pan coup, which is my style of poetry. I've created with my book coming out soon, Kundabini. Uh, it's just nine words, called, just called Biwams. Uh, 100 after parties for us to continue to celebrate. Um, this next piece is untitled, just a free verse poem. Shampoo scents lingers on my pillow. From my own body, the smell of dub soaps entice me, but saddens me at the same time. I wish I could be smelling the scent of the most stunning person I've ever seen beside me, booting her as the clock spring forward, not caring about an extra hour lost, her scent, touch, her essence. She will be enough. And I'll leave you with just one more, Panku. Oh, sorry, one second. Computers being slow, I apologize. Another pan coup untitled, this is nine lines, nine words each. I have a dream I will never be asked if scissoring is real again. Be told I can only achieve sexual pleasure, intimacy, have an orgasm with specific toys, oral sex, or fast fingering. Why can't two women rubbing clips up against one another achieve wet, steamy, sensual sensations? As all lips roughly or gently lock over and over, are you aware these comments are sexist, homophobic, cause anxiety, stress, and nightmares? I love scissoring, as do my partners, just fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lizzie. Uh, is there, uh, where can the people on the internet find you? They want more of that. Thank you. Um, they can find me, and I typed my IG name in my Zoom box, just ES underscore Strauss, where my website is, and they can learn more about me. Thank you so much. Happy 100. All right. Thank you, Lizzie. So great, great of you to join us. And another one of our friends from far off lands, but the same time zone out in Denver. Uh, he's been here for almost since like, I think June or July of the first year. He's a very early adapter. And 
And now it's like he was always here. It's really incredible to consider that. But please welcome to the stage, Michael Sindler. Hello, everybody. Congratulations on number 100. I'm going to do a couple quick ones of my own. Um, could I share the screen, sir? You got okay. it. We have it. And this first one is a haiku sonnet, and it is called Voyager for Carl Sagan. See the pale blue dot, source and substance of our dreams, blink and we're extinct, circling and spinning. It will be fine without us ditch that went away. Temporal spheroid, eventually engulfed by expanding star. Brief chance to behold our home and haven from vantage long mistaken for heaven. And I'm gonna do another new one. Um, that's a haiku called Flying Cardboard. Flying cardboard says, flat black, excuse me. Flying cardboard says, flat broke cracker needs cheddar. Slice off a single. And as is the custom, I'm putting on the hat and using the bulk of my time here. I'm going to start by doing a couple short poems by Lena Kostinko, who is a great Ukrainian poet. And uh, these are a couple poems she did, wrote back in 1986 in the wake of the Chernobyl explosion. And so they're known as her Chernobyl poems. The first one is on the banks of the Pripot, Pripot that a devil is sleeping. On the bank banks of the prepot, a devil is sleeping, pretending the scoundrel, he's a dried up willow. On the banks of the prepot, the bank of, on the river that once was deep blue, an atomic black candle is flickering for him. For him, villages in poverty and decline. On the riverbank, sands, his hooked claws sink in. In his ears, the wind whistles and whines. His obscenity scrawled on the windows and walls, cracked icons and wrecked respirator. And now he feels that he's done a good dose. This is empire. And he is the emperor, the reactor, all black, his hell and his throne. In the sands, he sleeps, curled up in flame. In his circle of ravens, he dreams all alone of Ukraine, of the whole of Ukraine. And the second one is called A Terrible Kaleidoscope. A Terrible Kaleidoscope. In this moment, Somewhere someone dies. In this moment, this very moment, each and every minute, a ship is wrecked. The Galapagos burn, and above the Dinpro sets the bitter wormwood star. Explosion, volcano, ruin, destruction. One aims, another falls. Don't shoot, a third implores. Scheherazade's tales run dry. Lorelei sings by the Rhine no more. A child plays, a comet flies. Faces bloom, not erased by dread. Blessed is each moment we're alive on these worldwide fields of death. And I'm going to go back a little further and do a piece by another great female 
Ukrainian poet, Lesha Ukranka. And this is from turn of the 20th century called Contra Spim Sparrow. Away, dark thoughts, you autumn clouds. A golden spring is here. Shall it be thus in sorrow and in lamentation that my youthful years pass away? No, though all my, through all my tears, I shall still laugh, sing songs despite my troubles, have hope despite all odds. I want to live away, you sorrowful thoughts. On this poor indigent ground, I shall sow flowers of flowing colors. I shall sow flowers even amidst the frost and water them with my bitter tears. And from those burning tears will melt the frozen crust so hard and strong. Perhaps the flowers will bloom and bring about for me a joyous spring. Unto a winding flinty mountain shall I bear my weighty stone. Yet even bearing such a crushing weight will I sing a joyful song. Throughout a lasting night of darkness, ne'er shall I rest my own eyes, always searching for the guiding star, the bright empress of the dark night skies. I shall not allow my heart to fall asleep, though gloom and misery envelop me. Despite my certain feelings that death is beating at my breath, breast, death will settle heavily on that breast, the snow covered by a cruel haze, but fierce shall beat my little heart and maybe with its ferocity overcome death. Yes, I will laugh despite my tears. I'll sing out songs amidst my misfortunes. I shall hope. Despite all odds, I will live away, you sorrowful thoughts. Okay, thank you all very much. It's us thanking you, Michael. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, where, where can the people find you? And what events do you have going on in your next um, I'm lurking around. I, I will be um, hosting Fincabulary. Uh, the last Thursday of the month, which I think is the very last day of the month, I'll be I'll be hosting over there. That's pretty much it. Excellent. Okay, thanks. Excellent. Friend of the show, Pin Bell. Check out her events as well. Uh, coming up next uh, is another one of our many friends coming to us uh, this time in a special uh, occasion from Nome, Alaska, and he has left a message for us. It just says squid. Uh, we don't know what to make of it. Perhaps it's a metaphor to do with ink, but he is here to explain himself. So please stand up and salute for Generalissimo Brian Franca. Oh, thank you, everyone. Um, well, I am going to do three very different poems. I don't know. Congratulations, Richie and Kit, for 100 shows. Oh, and I should say to Dan, too, because I think he's been here from the beginning. So you got to congratulate Dan as well. So uh, the first is uh, one that I sometimes get requests for. It's called From Squirrel to Eternity. I saw a squirrel with a pine cone in its mouth twice the size of its head. The squirrel had torn apart the pine cone, so it didn't look like a pine cone. It looked primal, but the squirrel was fluffy and cute. I thought to myself that primal and cute never happen at the same time. I needed a picture. I walked around the corner and the squirrel was just sitting there in the shade under a bush on a 92 degree main July afternoon. I lifted my phone for the photo. The squirrel dropped the pine cone into his little paws and yelled, hey, motherfucker, I didn't give you permission to take my photo or take film on me to make a fucking meme. Your fucking human friends will fucking laugh at and post online. He put the pine cone in his mouth and jetted fast as fury, dodging and weaving a bevy of pine trees like a Heisman Trophy winner. He took shelter in a group of sculpted ewes. I knew I'd never get the shot. I walked away and a pine cone that must have been flying 100 miles per hour hit the middle of my bald spot. As I lay in the grass, concussed and dizzy, the squirrel walked over to me, crossed his arms over his earnest bornine from here to eternity barrel chest, looked me square in the eyes and said, 
take a photo of this motherfucker. And I just found out that this poem is going to be in an anthology called Whispering Willows Tree Poems, which is a, a benefit anthology for the Arbor Day Foundation. So it's called Ode to a Magnolia. Oh, grand magnolia, I stand beneath you this Alabama spring evening. I reach high amongst your tangled branches toward one of your many giant flowers. I pull off a single velvety petal, press it to my nose, inhale intoxicating aroma. My head becomes light. I feel woozy. I believe you were created for the benefit of couples in love who walk hand in hand on nights like tonight. The rain has just stopped. The atmosphere is steamy, heavy. The air is slightly cool. Your perfume drugs air such couples breathe, renders their sensibilities senseless with romance. They kiss passionately in a public place when they might not have in another situation. Though your mate lies 100 or 200 feet away and you may never see or touch him, you are a perfect example of how humanity, nature, and romance so easily overlapped and connect like petals of buds yet to become flowers. And this is a brand new poem called Colors of War. I cannot claim to comprehend what it's like to live in a war zone. The split second the first shot is fired, life would have to transform from living and breathing to fighting and surviving. Reality would change to an alternate reality that would whittle away at the past with every next shot fired. Colors could represent themselves differently from their realities, so beauty could exist amongst constant chaos and turmoil. Every shade of blood could find new identities in our minds. The brightest reds could be a shiny new Corvette and a Prince song or a sweet sticky maraschino cherry. Maroon could be a soft demure cashmere sweater accented by grandma's pearls paired with skinny jeans and toe squeezing stilettos. Deep purple could embody a tree ripened plum whose juice cascades down your chin and stains your favorite shirt. Then there is blood that is almost black and void of other pigment. One might think was, po was poisoned by gunpowder rather than lack of oxygen at the wound site. All the khaki and olive green and soldier's uniform seem so casual, but there is nothing casual about, casual about a tank casually flattening a car. There is nothing casual about a warplane dropping a bomb containing multitudes of tiny bombs designed to wipe out multiple acres of apartment buildings, stores, and cars, destroying property and people like a pressure cooker filled with explosives and nails set to explode during a marathon. There is brass that should be shiny, brass bars, stars, wings, and birds belonging to people who give orders to others who take orders, brass tarnished by smoke and blood and dust and death that will never find its way back to shiny again. Finally, there is the whites of the eyes of the despot who gave the order to invade a neighboring nation, a despot whose people he claims to protect, yet live in fear of him and become silent as if they were born without voices. Men and women he rule wear burkas out of necessity to mask their peripheral vision and identities. The white in his eyes is so bright it blinds anyone who chooses to maintain eye contact. If anyone inhales hard enough in his presence, they might smell the bleach he used to erase the color in his irises to create a white that disappears into death, destruction and nothingness. Thank you. Very strong general. Thank you very much. And uh, where, where can people find more work from you if that's what they're inclined to do? Oh, well, I will. Let's see, do I have this thing up here? I have to pull up my, uh, my information and I'll put it in the chat how you can buy my book. And uh, on Wednesday, I'll also put the, the link to that. I, um, I'll be featuring at N1 Ear in Chicago, which is a really wonderful open mic as well. Um, but anyways, I'll put all the information. And of course, there's Cafe Journalism on the 21st. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Brian Franco. And uh, 
here in El Paso, we're no stranger to borders. So hopping one more isn't really gonna make a difference because we're gonna go up to Canada and, and see someone who is a tremendously funny writer and performer and, and see what they have in store for us. Please welcome Jeff Cottrell. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna give you some old shit and some new shit. So uh, here's the old shit. Um, this, uh, this may or may not have been based on a real Facebook interaction that I had. And it's called, do you know who I am? Excuse me, Jeff. Did I just hear you correctly? Do I understand that you dare to offer an opinion on the cinema of Stanley Kubrick? That you dare to offer such an opinion to me? Do you know who I am, Jeff? Do you know who I am? Let me enlighten you then. I'll have you know that I am the acclaimed author of more than 15 best-selling science fiction novels and the recipient of two Academy Award nominations for my commission's screenplays. I have also taught several courses at the American Film Institute and at the Columbia University School of the Arts. Respected people seek out my opinions on cinema and literature, Jeff. They don't have the gall to give me theirs. So I think my discourse on the Kubrick over has far more credibility than yours ever will. Who are you, Jeff? You write your silly, petty little poems and monologues and perform them like a trained chimpanzee at small pub readings and Zoom. You make your meager living writing advertising profiles of dip, god, industrial equipment. What a small, shallow world you live. What could you possibly have to contribute to a discussion of high cinema? Do you know who I am, Jeff? And here's what your tiny mind will never understand. I am not merely a high profile expert in Stanley Kubrick's art. You see, I worked with Stanley Kubrick. I knew Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick was a friend of mine. And Jeff, you're no Stanley Kubrick. Oh, you didn't know. Stanley used to invite me to his home in England all the time. We'd go out and play golf and discuss literary and film theory and talk about chess and Seinfeld too. Christiane would bake cookies and cakes for us and we'd sit on the porch and laugh and laugh. We'd laugh about fools like you, Jeff. Fools like you who dare to test your toes in the great ocean of high art, but you don't have the stamina to stay afloat in that ocean, and the sharks and piranhas of truth will eat you alive. You just don't understand Stanley the way I do, Jeff. Christiane still sends me birthday cards. I could show them to you, just say the word. Or are you too cowardly to witness real success? Do you know who I am, Jeff? I'm not merely a valued confidant of Stanley Kubrick. Oh, no. I also knew Philip K. Dick. You didn't ask, but I'm telling you anyway. And I wasn't just his friend, Jeff. I was Philip K. Dick's mentor. He would have been nothing without my influence, I tell you. And let me make it clear, the man respected me. He never thought of polluting the air around me with his superficial musings about Carl Jung or H.G. Wells or L. Ron Hubbard or even D.C. Fontana. He knew it wasn't his place. If I needed my boots licked without a second's hesitation, would he get down on his knees and lick them until royalty could dine off them? If I wanted a cup of coffee, he would not rest until the finest plantations of southeastern Brazil had delivered the finest coffee grounds to my very doorstep. You could learn a lot from the humility of Philip K. Dick, Jeff, but I suppose you never will. Do you know who I am? In the greater picture, it doesn't matter if you do, because I know who you are. You are a child, Jeff, an ignorant Wayward child lost in a forest of sophisticated adults, and you just don't have the instincts to survive in the wild, do you? You are a dumb yokel without the tools or the knowledge to thrive in the world of mature cultural appreciation. And all of this would be perfectly tolerable if only you knew your place, Jeff, but you don't. Your place is not to give uninformed and misguided opinions on cinematic works that are beyond your understanding. You don't have the license to share these empty musings with experts like yours truly. When you do, it's nothing better than uh, mansplaining. Yes, that's what the kids are calling it today, isn't it? I mean, you're mansplaining. Even when you do it to another man, it's still mansplaining. Of course, when I talk down to you, it's a completely different thing. Because I've earned my place above you, Jeff. I've earned my stature through a hard work ethic and openness to learning of which you cannot conceive. Farewell, my young parole friend. I'm running late. I'm off to dine with Connie Willis, Neil Gaiman, and Ray Ryan Johnson. You run off now and enjoy your little Snapchat and TikTok videos like a good boy. Run along. Don't bother me. That was called Do You Know Who I Am? And here's the new shit. This is uh, what I did was I updated an Aesop fable. 
This is called The Ant and the Grasshopper in the Arts. An ant and a grasshopper were waiting to audition for a major stage remount of Hamlet. I'm sure to get the role of Prince Hamlet, boasted the grasshopper. You don't say, said the ant. I'm gunning for that part too. That's cute, said the grasshopper with a smirk. But I'm going to land it. You know why? Because I've got charm, effortless charm, and God-given talent. That's what my agent says. I've got a natural stage presence that can't help but win over even the most discriminating casting directors. They know I've got what it takes to draw audiences to the box office. What do you think of that? That's nice, said the ant. I'm going to count on hard work to get the role. Hard work? The grasshopper guffawed. Are you serious? Oh, yes. The ant waved his resume at the grasshopper. 20 years of acting experience, both stage and film. Not only that, but I studied at Juilliard under some of the greatest acting teachers in the continent. The method, the Alexander technique. I've long mastered it all. Huh, said the grasshopper. And besides, the ant went on, I already know the play inside out. And I've been conducting a thorough analysis of Prince Hamlet's inner motivations throughout the play. Not to mention doing extensive historical research into what it was really like to be a young Danish prince in the Middle Ages as well as the common behavior of people with depression and suicidal tendencies. This is how I'm going to achieve the most honest and authentic portrait, portrait I possibly can. The grasshopper laughed again. Sucker, he said. All that hard work is a waste of time. My charm and talent always get me by, and they will again now. Whatever, said the ant as he headed into the audition room. Good luck, grasshopper. Three months later, the grasshopper had started his first day at flipping burgers at the local Wendy's. He was very depressed about not getting a role in the Hamlet production. Maybe the ant was right, he thought. Maybe I should have done all the work, paid my dues. Maybe that's how you succeed. The grasshopper had to use the bathroom, so he cut through the kitchen to get to the facilities, and there, loading burger patties into the freezer, was the ant. It's you, gasped the grasshopper. The ant turned to the grasshopper and nodded. What are you doing here? You didn't score the Hamlet role either? The ant gave an embarrassed shrug. They cast the producer's son as Hamlet, he replied. Wow, said the grasshopper. But come on, you didn't get any role in the play. The ant shook his head. The other roles just went to a bunch of dudes who were better looking than us. There was a pause as the ant opened another meat package. Well, that's bullshit, said the grasshopper. The ant just shrugged again. So, added the grasshopper, you want to apply for med school? That was the ant and the grasshopper in the arts. And as some of you know, I have a novel that is now available for pre-order. It looks like this, and I believe Generalissimo also has his copy. Let's let's see his copy. There, he's holding his too. So um, and I would like to say that the ink inside this book smells really very nice. It does, yes. Well, this is my proof copy, but uh, I'll, I'll smell those ones later and confirm. Um, but yes, and I have a big Zoom launch party happening this Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern time. So I believe that's 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, El Paso time. So I'm going to put links to the, Facebook's, the Facebook event page and purchase links and, and a podcast I was just interviewed for. And, and uh, one, one more thing I guess I can announce now. Um, any po Poetry in the Brew friends? I uh, bought plane tickets today to go to Nashville to feature at Poetry of the Brew in May. So here's fingers crossed that COVID it does not act like a jerk in the next two months, and I get to feature live at Poetry in the Brew. I think it'll be I think it'll be simulcast on uh, Facebook Live too. So uh, more on that later to come. All right, fingers and toes crossed for our friend Jeff Catrill. Congratulations on the book, sir. Okay. I also hope people uh, don't die and stuff, but uh, also I want to know. <laughs> Yes, that is certainly what we all hope for. And uh, coming up next from their new dig, still in the lovely town of Pittsburgh, uh, is someone talented in all the ways that word can be applied to an act or task. Uh, please welcome Vale Larkin. Thank you. Hi. Yes, I'm very excited about my new house. Um. Okay, so I'm trying to think of, I tried to think of a good set for your 100th, because I'm very excited for you. Um, and I suck at that, so I asked for suggestions. 
So the first one, the second one is a suggested one, and the first one is someone told me to just do a couple from the past couple of years, so I figured I'd pick two that were sort of indicative. So the second one is sexy and funny and silly and a little bit like that. And the first one is um, encouraging, but in a kind of judgmental way, which I think is unfortunately part of my thing. The mystifying persistence of irrelevant shame. You all want us to. You all love when we stand up or speak out. Such applause behind the scenes. Also, you don't have to step up or stand out. And your admiration for our strength feels like glass in our chests. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to help. You don't know why I'm bringing all this up. I'm piling it up around us, displayed and arrayed so every detail shines and we cannot pretend that we just don't know anymore. Sure, it's easy when the syllables flow like liquid miracles, life-giving rhythm and the rush, the fucking rush of witnessing passion, pain and power pumped to 11, because severing truth from excitement makes it so much harder to swallow. So we follow the flock and we scream, shout and bellow, so some part of our voice will ring out in this melee. No one listens when you're tired. Plain words about pain are not bright and exciting, because naked displays of the fragile and frail seem to rouse up our shame, that we walk, that we break and remake, that we see, that we labor in sameness, while others walk ranges, blood on the peaks, every leap life-changing. As we stand in the foothills, confused by the pain in our own souls, wondering how they are so much stronger, as though shorter knives matter through such thin feet. Shameless, that's what we must be. Not fearless, never cold in the face of all this heat, all this rabid insanity. Without shame, because shame is like blame. It's condemnation inflamed and it's what's holding us all back every time we sit out or stand down. Every time we find reasons within for not acting when action is all that will win. When winning is everyone, and there are no losers, and we're all in this thing, this planet, this exact same house together. So stand up when it hurts, and speak when it burns. Because this is how shame dies, at your feet, silenced by your voice. And slain by the knowledge that you have done something, anything, to resist the destruction. Okay, and now for something completely different. Sear type contact. Day 492 of the pandemic. Everyone on the internet who is my age believes I am 28 years old, except for those I have specifically contradicted. I am frequently addressed as though I am an especially precocious wunderkind. This is uncomfortable. Everyone else on the internet also believes I am 28 years old until corrected. This makes for some awkwardly age-inappropriate propositions from multiple age groups. I am growing desperate. Did you know that the qualifications for high-quality poetry production are nearly identical to those of a particularly robust and evocative online sexting participant? Everyone always says detailed descriptions, but what they really mean is three words each for fuck, pussy, cock, and cum. Mix them liberally, apply often, and just keep pumping until something erupts, right? God, what I would give for a big, strong poet with a fucking filthy mind, who is also into five-foot-tall envies with green hair and weird pixie features. God, in unrelated news, did you know that complex, nuanced erotica is equally popular among femme, mask, and non-binary populations? Do you realize the sheer number of times someone has come with a Jane Austen quote in mind? Mr. Darcy might as, be, might as well be one of the Winchester boys for how often he lands in fan fiction. I am growing desperate. Chat one. He says, we begin. He says, cock. I say, my trembling lower lip glistens as the tip of my tongue passes over it 
my wide eyes staring up at you hungry and waiting. He says pussy. He says fuck. I explain what I would like to do to the skin between his fingers with my tongue while I am kneeling before him and immediately before I lift my eyes to meet his. Tears welling up as he watches. He says come and leaves. Chat to. He says I reach for your gown in the twilight beneath the trees, as our peoples come together in the ancient rite of peace and bonding. I say, I meet your hands eagerly. The moment of truth upon us, our fates intertwined as the fire of our passion rises up into the night. I lose myself in your lips. He says, your body enraptures me. Breath overtakes me. I must have you now ere I die of this bliss. I say, my hands caress your chest, lingering downward toward the straining length rising to meet them. He says, fuck. He says, amazing. He leaves. Chat three. He says, pussy. I say, the power structures inherent in Western binary cis-heteronormative mating rituals are the result of repression of the id by societal mores leading to fetishization of taboo practices and a pseudo-dissociative drive for publicly strong individuals to enjoy being dominated in sexual roleplay, and oftentimes vice versa. He says, come and leaves. Chat four. He says, what is the nature of your problem? I say, the pursuit of intimacy is inherently flawed in a capitalist society that virtually requires its components to function with artificial emotional autonomy in order to maintain workforce productivity by eliminating support structures that ameliorate the psychic damage perpetuated by exploitative systems of economic hierarchy. He says, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I say, no one has ever made me come who I did not care about. Lust is inherently melded to empathy in me. My kink is your pleasure. My climax, your release. If, you, if I do not care how you feel, you can't make me feel anything. He says, I'm sorry, please select from the following options. I say, will you fuck me while I cry? He says, Sayer type, accounts. Sayer type, technical support. Sayer type, contact. It is day 493 of the pandemic. I am growing desperate. I love that one. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, sadly, I think we can all relate to that one a little bit. You requested it. <laughs> I know. I'm not. I'm. I'm not happy about why I requested it. <laughs> uh, but, but Vale, where can the people find more of you if that's what they're inclined to do? <laughs> Um, if you are so inclined, I'm at Vale Larkin on Instagram. Um, I'm Vale Larkin on Linktree, and I'm at. Uh, irritatingly enough, I think I'm at Larkin Vale on Twitter. Right. Vale Larkin, remember the name. And coming up next, well, uh, our machine is a dud and we're stuck in the mud somewhere in the swamps of Jersey, as Bruce once wrote. And that's all right, because that means we get to visit our friend Nick Paleologos. You do. One of the few guest hosts on here. On top of that so yeah <laughs> congrats on 100 i got two new ones and a cover i haven't done a cover here in a while but i figured i'd do a cover first one 100 times more on this day a day of pie may all the flowers of this accomplishment be like strawberries or peaches or raspberries whatever your choice make sure or stand alone for this show has been an infinite a show uh, many of us convened for a hundred times with many voices a hundred times over we crawled through barbed wire opened up this pit not an abyss or a miss or a misconstrual of words 
No, what happened is and is happening here is a flower that has bloomed among the garden, a tree that has rooted in the cyberverse. We caught all the supernovas the people had to offer. We are here to celebrate. Happy 100 BWAMs. I'll see you soon, Texas. You've been calling my name since I got here. Prelude right there. Maybe, who knows? Maybe I might be out there very soon. <laughs> The second one is a really fresh new one, and I came up with the title this last night before I made the poem. This one's called The Ghost Inside Me Is My Soul Trying to Live. I had this urge for a while. An urge is a tug and pull, a magnetic attraction to the opposite of what I want. These urges have been very strong lately, a rip of the seams of my body to try to connect to better with pleasure. No knives or sharp objects needed. No cutting out another piece of my soul. I live in a dream state covering a nightmare, a state of euphoric distortion, scared of scarring my soul. I'm craving it again. Urge is strengthened by a tightrope hoisting me by the waist, trying to make a temporary Tinkerbell fairy tale the fairies told me to escape real life. Follow on the Peter panels to the mirrors people see. The urge begin begs to disrupt my purpose. Instead of drink... I'll take the ink. Instead of powder, I'll take the paper. Instead of the edges, I'll take the pen. Make a poem out of these nightmares. Live the dream that I am in. It's no longer a dream. My purpose is to make the impossible reality. My soul is, I put into my work is the impossible. It is possible. Just right. Until the specter is no you know, evil. Until the soul is bearing fruit. Until we change the climate. Until we change the world. I'll start with changing myself. And to conclude is a cover poem, actually. This is um, Serge Tankian, The Nerves of Them. The Nerves of Them. The master's gardens are painted with blood. The big strums on tense strings, ants need anthills to be productive. Self-inflating balls imprison the riders, taking away their senses of direction and security. Empty Tupperware sit up top art books ready for transport. Track 15 may drive you crazy. Noise art, art, noise, musical lizard, pronouncing instruments, screams from the vocal box, barks, stomps, clampers, and shifts from our minds. Panda-eating carnivores. The clock ticks without moving its arms. They'll drive into our unsuspecting nerves. The nerves of them. That's all. That's everything, as Richie likes to say. Uh, Sorry to swagger Jack Ritchie, but I had to do it. Uh, Nick, please tell the people where they can find more of you. Um, Y'all can find me at The Real Nick P on IG, Facebook, um, Nick Paylogos. If you miss any of my workshops, I just did a poetry game, so um, Fincabulary. If you miss that, you can want to get the stuff from that. Just uh, send me a message, and I'll just send you the stuff and everything, too, as well, and everything. So I got y'all. Um, I don't have – oh, I have my next – my next hosting venture is uh, Wednesday at uh, um, Word is Right, 915 EST. Right I'll drop my info in the chat. Right on, Nick, part of the uh, association of uh, hosts of this very program. Uh, and uh, coming up next, we have someone who is a big fish where he comes from because he is the poet laureate of South Euclid, Ohio, which they seem like they're in good hands as far as their development goes. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Doc Jan. Thank you. Uh, in good hands, uh, I'm not all state, so. <laughs> uh, and I, I just read to our city council this evening, which I do at every meeting. This is tabula rasa, in ineffable calligraphy of time. Who is who is become a tabula rasa? What and why the same? And limitless memories of you drift through my dreams. A missing song, a plan which was lost in unborn air of a tattered self, surrounded by life on a shattered ship of solitary. And you are there, born of latent thought in soft winds and warm rememory, then 
inexplicable secret reasons known to all, known to none, a melody of forever played on silent strings of stars, echoes in the never of between, and in edgeless sound of ever night are infinite longing symbols of Sadadi, Hirayf, and Kutch. And I begin. This is another version of Tabula Rasa. On sensuous shores of darkness lies the voice of distant longing, breathing colors of love, Sodade, its sighing song. Midnight on the edge of forever, amid ululations of time and culmination of infinities, an intonation of passion. Amid sand mandalas of sound flying through eternity, tabula rasa of heart and soul absorbs s of ecstasy and the forever beyond forever in shadows shadows of the multiverse soars amid seductive swellings into rhapsodies rhapsodies of rapture and i'll finish with this poem based on a line from Shakespeare's Macbeth, which begins, life's but a walking shadow, walking shadows of life. In the fragile density of our existence, in a middle ground I cannot see, amid the surreality of love, walking shadows of life and emptiness of time, I try to find myself in your eyes, searching in your depths for orenda of you i see a scintilla of me and poetry of us begins emerging from dimensions molding shaping surreal into real thank you thank you doc that's very interesting that that sprang out of that line from Macbeth, where Macbeth is very down on life itself, and you managed to completely flip that. That's very interesting. Thank you very much, Doc. Uh, where can the people find more of you if that's what they want to do? I will throw a few things into the chat, uh, but to, first and foremost, tomorrow evening at 7 Eastern time, I am featuring on SpoFest. All right. That's outstanding. Okay, thanks again, Doc. And uh, coming up next to our little stage is, uh, I'm trying to stop saying, um, it's my little bad habit that I'm trying to break live in front of you all. Need a little buzzer pen so I can do that every time I go up. But coming up is someone who knows the, the, uh, the pitfalls of hosting and does so admirably, and did so admirably a couple of weeks ago. And uh, from the Bronx, please welcome our friend, Ron Mark Thompson. Thank you very much, Kit. And yeah, I don't know what's happening. Every time I'm on, the, the ones before me are not showing up. So I'm like, I didn't realize I was on already, though, but you're keeping me on tour. I love it. And uh, funny enough, I did not sign up for the open mic today. I did forget it was the 100th online live stream episode. Then I looked at my calendar. Oh, yep, it is. And then one of your co-producers gilded me into signing up. And then I got afraid that if I don't read something, I'm not going to be allowed to come back to ho guest host after the 200 episodes. So I'm like, okay, let me just sign up. <laughs> so, so what I did, and I almost pulled it then here. I'm almost like, can you move me a few more? Because I'm still writing. I literally just finished writing this a minute ago. I took some of the lines from the chat and what we verbally said in the pre-show before we went live and I took some of the words. So here we go. And it's very short. My best wishes, happy 100 live streams to you, dear B-Worms. 
two years online you heard and saw us from our living and bedrooms. You keep us on tow each Monday with the roster list that stays subject to change. You dizzy me virtually flying around the globe from one performer to another. What a range. We are here for our therapy session to get Mondays off our chest. It's the right evening to close the first day of the week in our best. With their energy, neither Kit nor Richie look like they are 100 old. Thank goodness they will continue for us another 100 episodes, so I'm told. B-Worms has the barbed wire right in its name. The open mic is sharp yet gentle. How come the home or S-A-H-O-M is not the acronym for the stay at home open mic? This should be elemental. Anyway, what a joy. I'm looking forward to the next 100, just like all else in society these days. Everything is numbered. 100 weeks sadly also means two years that the pandemic has plagued us so far. I hope the virus goes away and will not be here at 200 on par. Hooray to the open mic online from El Paso on every Monday evening. Thank you for keeping us company and allowing us to read our poems and stories and listen to our songs. We sing. And that's how far I got. Happy 100 uh, S-A-H-O-M. Happy 100 Richie and Kid. Okay, thank you guys. The S-H-O-M, the Buam Shom. That sounds like a magic spell. I might have just made my dog turn a different color or something. I don't know. I, I guess keep saying that and see what happens. Yeah, I guess he never adapted it because it doesn't sound as easy as bee worms. You know, bee worms is like so nice and gentle, but sh yeah, shahom, shahom, I don't know. Warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always tell people to make the noise from inception, just go worms. And uh, so, Ron, where can people find more from you if that's what they want to do? What else are you involved with? Well, I hope they don't find me. You know, I'm very shy. I hardly come to any open mics. I don't like to read, you know, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So yes, I, you can find me here on Mondays, first at the New Oregon Poets Cafe, where I do some work and then closing out the night at b -Worms. I'm always happy to be here. Uh, you can find me at Ron Mark Thompson. Uh, that's my personal and at BXAFH, which is the acronym for Bronx Art and Fun Up. Don't try to pronounce that B Big C F H. I don't even know how to do that, you know. So I just did that because it was available when I founded it two and a half years ago. But yeah, you can find writing workshops, uh, open mics, um, ekphrastic poetry and prose uh, at that. I'll put that in the chat. And yep, yeah, and uh, I'll be at, uh, I hope I'll guest host here again. Um, I guest host at Fincapillary infrequently, and I do workshops at The Word Is Right. So I will put that all in the chat. Thank you so much, Kit. Thank you, Richie. Appreciate you guys. And we appreciate you as well. You get that back with interest. Thank you again, Ron. All right, coming up next, we're going back to the home base for a little bit. We're going back to El Paso, and we are going to visit with you know, as someone else who has a relative in the arts, I really uh, relate to this guy and what and what it's like to have to have this sort of like friendly competition all the time with their older sibling. And I think it's getting neck and neck right, right about now. I think it's getting closer and closer every day. Uh, please welcome Manuel Martinez. Hey, thanks, Kit. And it's it's pretty much just a case of trying to fill those shoes. Those those are big literary shoes right there with Lee. Uh, I have three pieces and a guest poem. Uh, I'll start with the oldest to newest. So, open me. Expose what makes me, me. 
pick apart every piece, bit, and shard of my being. Dissect my motives, thoughts, loves, and fears. Put me back together, full, understood. Deconstruct my being, make me one with the whole. Defined by existence, by the sum of all experiences. Call me upon, point me out, to experience becoming anew. Bring me to the border between what's real and what cannot be, and leave me alone to be, blurred around the edges. How am I to become again? How do I refocus the image of me? Now that I am an infinitesimal point in the entirety of the cosmos, I have become background radiation, the energy that encompasses all that is known, but I am unseen, unaccounted for, a fuss in the fabric of life. And then, second piece in Spanish, one of the only pieces that I have with titles, De Disociaciones y Otros Demonios. Desaparezco, entre líneas borrosas, pensamientos amontonados y miradas al infinito. Permanezco, tan solo en materia, mi mente divagando entre futuros inciertos, inventados. Atorado, en escenarios imposibles, fabricaciones de los hubieras, pudieras, quisieras incorpóreos. Desaparezco, quizás como defensa ante una realidad que no entiendo. Uh, I'm going to go ahead with the guest. Uh, this is by a friend of mine, Arturo Perez. Uh, he has a little booklet available. And this is letter number seven in his book. Entre todos los gritos y golpes que el mundo da a su prójimo, aunque encuentre un refugio donde protegerme de todo este escándalo, me puedo dañar peor con mis propios pensamientos. Y al, parecer, y al parecer ver las heladas ir y venir solo han hecho que mi musa predilecta en una de mi musa predilecta en una pesadilla. Pocas cosas son las que he, han evitado que me deshaga de mi sanidad y se, me termine de hacer añicos. Solo un susurro que pudiera mandarme me podría detener. Si ella está bien, puedo estar tranquilo, pero ¿qué puedo hacer por ella? Hay cosas que puedo hacer y hay cosas que puedo dejarlas al ingenio pero puedo apostar a que ella preferiría que otra persona hubiera, pusiera hasta un grano de arena. Probablemente todas las palabras que he plasmado aquí no tienen nada de brillo, y ninguna de ellas es trascendente en ningún aspecto, pero mis letras están abiertas así como me abría ella. Probablemente no le guste escuchar estas cosas viniendo de mí, quizás haya imaginado otra identidad diciendo algo mucho más complejo, pero regalar una firmeza para mantener todas las palabras a flote y las promesas a cumplir hasta que el cariño acabe, lo dudo. ¿Qué pasará cuando vuelva? No me puedo dar una mínima idea de lo que ocurrirá con ella. Ni siquiera puedo imaginarme de lo que será, mi, de, lo que será de mí para ella. Solo sé que si algún día necesita algún idiota que la siga hasta el borde de algún abismo, hasta el colmo de algún vicio, hasta la represalia de una tontería, hasta la penitencia de sus actos, puede contar con este servidor. And... A final one. Uh, this one is a little bit more personal. I'm a grad student. I'm an engineering grad student, and this is kind of what I deal with on a daily basis. A moral conundrum. How do I reconcile what I firmly believe with what I am passionate about? I exist within a system that regards, rewards the work and knowledge of those like me, not on the basis of the good we can bring into the world, but on our ability to enable the, the lethality of a faceless monstrous machine. If poets and philosophers were as efficient in creating death and destruction, the system would reward them as much as they reward scientists and engineers. How can I reconcile my anti-war, anti-imperialist positions with the fact that I am just another cog in the same machine that I hate? Am I a hypocrite? Am I a traitor to those views that I so adamantly defend? The more I look into it, the more I, I am convinced that maybe I am just as guilty as those that point the guns. Those that with the press of a button oppress the destitute and the weak. Those that bring entire villages and civilizations to their knees in a pile of rubble and dirt. Maybe I am a hypocrite after all. And that is all. Thanks very much, Manuel. Uh, where can the people uh, keep up with all the, all the irons you have in the fire? So I, well, they, I really, I really like that analogy right there. <laughs> I do live streaming from time to time on Twitch. Uh, I do gaming and I also do live blacksmithing from time to time over there. And if you want to see a lot of cool pictures, just me being a dumbass on the internet, you can follow me there and also on Twitter. All right. 
All right, well, thanks very much for joining us again this week, Manuel. And we're going now from the home base uh, out to the uh, buzz, out to the Beltway, where uh, where our friend and artist, um, again, he's got a lot of talent in two things that you don't think of going uh, together, but he's an interesting artist and a pretty exhaustive linguist. And we're going to listen to him speak for a little bit now. Uh, please welcome Park William, Martin Park, to the stage. Uh, thank you very much, Kit. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, we got you. Okay, sorry, pardon me while I go off camera so you don't see my forehead while I can see my poems here. Um, uh, glad to be here for the 100th episode. I haven't been here for a while because my doctor doesn't want me up this late, but I usually end up staying up this late anyway, so I figured I can't miss this. So. I'd like to start with a poem that came together recently about a friend I made in Japan. I'm calling MLR. Met on a late night train to Sendai. Upon a tag, she signed her name while standing on luggage to let people by and added these words, avoid the plane. She turned me on to prog folk tales with ice cubes as thin as the dawn of the day while a horse she rented by mucking out stalls in her dreams like Ian was skating away. At later meetings, judgments were made with praise for a seasonal Renaissance scene whose origins into illusion would fade in disdain for a painting described by a queen. She conjured up visions of dungeons she'd build where dragons would fly with thread in the sky. Then casually through her lips, the words spilled. By 35, she would rather die. I snapped a shot, but she turned away shy toward clearings that forms like mountains surround while cherry blossoms floated on by along the former castle ground. Somewhere I still have that tag she once signed. The night we met on that crowded train, a pearl of wisdom gleaned from her mind. And ever I endeavor to avoid the plane. And next I'd like to read a relatively short elegy that uh, came to me recently, just the other day. All right, I guess I, I used to do these things in bits and pieces, so most of it came the other day. I'd written down a few lines before that. This is uh, about a coworker I had for a brief period. It's called One Sharp Lady. Alta Sharp was as sharp as a tack. She sat next to me and we exchanged, and we exchanged names while doing our otherwise tiresome job of opening envelopes and sorting through claims. She freely admitted she was past the age so many expected to retire before, but took the job to avoid the allure of Atlantic City on the Jersey Shore. We'd laugh at claimant's grammatical errors while swapping customers' tales with the boss and how do they complain about triple attempts to send in their claim that must have got lost? We traded our thoughts on our on favorite pies, and when our time together was passed, she shared her recipe for ambrosia delight. And when I got home, I read it at last. Inscribed on the back in her antique hand were words of hers that still bemuse. I wrote this out three times so far. Whatever you do, just please don't noose. And that's in loving memory of Alta Sharp of Westchester, Pennsylvania. And I've really been enjoying doing workshops at Tumblewords. And if I can find it here, I have one I wrote there that is about, uh, how writing these elegies has been helping me out. I was taught not to cry like most boys I knew. 
But I've reached an age where quite a few of the closest friends I ever knew have left this world to move on to the next. And tears have come in sudden floods more often than I ever expected they would. But they've often led to a sudden rush of words that pour forth out of my heart. The writing of these elegy poems has unfurled a window for sharing my emotions with the world. And that's it, thank you. Well, thank you, Mark. And uh, if the people want to hear more and see more of what you do, where can they go? Um, I actually still have this from when I was here last. I don't know if I'm holding up so you can see it right or not. But I'm uh, at the green so, screen's eating it. <laughs> uh, okay, farther back sometimes. Is that better? That, that's better. Okay. I'm at uh, parquillion.com. You can see my linguistic artwork there. And uh, I'm on Instagram as at Parquillion. And I have a couple anthologies for DC Poetry Collective that has some of my poems in them that I can put in the chat. And I have uh, haven't mentioned before, but I have a, a text adventure game online. If anybody's interested, just let me know. I can put the link for that in too. A text adventure game, wow. Thank you. We're all having text adventures here in the poetry community. Let's think about it. <laughs> Uh, but yes, thank you again, Martin. Good to see you again. And thank you. The next person on our stage, the next person on our stage, we're going from Washington, D.C. Uh, to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, the land of horse racing and so on. But a uh, horse is not the animal we're concerned with. We are going to visit with our friend, Frog Corpse. Uh, Frog, when you're ready, please step up to the microphone. Who will talk deep into the night? when voices are sound asleep. In any event, should a word be found, would it be spoken from dream? Its silence found late into hours, does its presence rouse to think of connections made that ever stray missed in the conscience of a blink? While writing these words, a spirit professed of this world's co-wicked game, it's plucking of tongues on mute eardrum, echoing love's words estranged. These lowly old thoughts penned with pen, summon its ghosts of ink, its words displaced from its haunted page, released a specter in them. Human versus human. You must let your truth speak. The silencing of the self rest in one's doubting. By noose, let these words ring, lingering in the open, tolling through the streets. Choose your words wisely, make them concise and clean. For should they open unknown wounds, it is not your place to teach them how to mend these, rending scars that life once pired while harping on pain's pollution, vow to seek a better future, breaking foundation by what was spoken. Words define who goes to ground when conclusions are made concussive. Though should they spill from a final thought, make sure a fountain flows from their interment. Their mantle space from a material waste is a trophy case for an ego wanting the cost of a life is at the price of an opinion expensed for nothing. A war well traveled is a lesser road, as all roads traveled lead toward the same. To have hope that the wound will travel thin is to survive by a duller blade. Remain hopeful that the old corner listens in to make tomorrow become today. Should these words be the last, make sure they be the ones best seen engraved. Toward the flow of masses consumed and enraptured, tis easy to be misled. So make sure the swinging from thy lips be the gallow that pulls the pin. Wow, I'm, I'm not sure if you're done. That was, that was great. 
Uh, Frog, where can the people find more of you? If that's what they want to do. Um, uh, I would say check me out on Instagram. I take a lot of photos now. Um, you can catch those in my story daily. And uh, I just finished the other day editing up my book, The Morning Hour. So it'll be about soon through my friend, James Dennis Casey IV at his publishing house, uh, Cajun Mutt Press. So thank you. Okay, well, thank you. All right, that's a hard act to follow, but steel sharp and steel. We have no weak spots in our lineup. And coming up next is, you see, there was sort of a, a middle stage in our development because we started just very close knit locals, but then we had local people who hadn't gone out before. And they found this as a way of dipping their toes into the water. And now they are weaved in the very center of things. Uh, and we, we would not have met without this day at home open mic. And that would have been terrible. Uh, so please welcome to the stage, uh, my birthday twin, joining us from Mexico City tonight, Lee, Lee Martinez Soto. Hello. Can y'all hear me good? Loud hey. and clear. All right. So I only have one today. Um, it's going to be the uh, English version and the translation. This is called Transfronterizo. I write from a place of nostalgia. Sepia colored glasses tinting the journey from north to south, south to north, back and forth for so many years that I no longer have a place to call home. I am an everlasting commuter. The ghost of this threshold, outsider and denizen, part of, apart from, of this big memory of belonging I am epochs removed from. Casita linda, I no longer know you, much like I no longer know the pressed together houses of the cuadra, those labyrinthian structures of calles y colonias, gentes y pandillas that I used to navigate without the need for direction or the ever creeping sense of fear. I have committed to memory the parts of you I loved and those I wish I could be rid of. I know now that those parts are gone. The places once bustling with life are now retirement homes of these childhood, young adulthood hauntings and memories that shaped me. I am stuck in the past on the south and the norte and afraid of crossing this gargantuan bridge to the other side where this place I have called home for over a decade lies. I wonder how long does it take for the dust to settle in for new memories to be made, for this feeling of estrangement to be gone so I can finally feel like I am home. Escribo de un lugar de nostalgia, lentes de color sepia tiñendo el trayecto de norte a sur, sur a norte de ida y vuelta por tantos años que ya no tengo un lugar al cual llamar casa. Soy un viajero constante, el fantasma de este umbral, forastero y residente, parte de, aparte de, De ese vago recuerdo de pertenencia estoy épocas removido. Casita linda, ya no te reconozco, así como ya no conozco las casas pegadas las unas a las otras de tu cuadra, esas estructuras laberínticas de calles y colonias, gentes y pandillas que solían navegar sin necesidad de dirección o la siempre creciente sensación de miedo. He memorizado las partes de ti que amaba y aquellos recuerdos de los cuales me gustaría deshacerme. Ahora sé que esas partes de ti se han ido. Los lugares, una vez llenos de vida, ahora son casas de retiro de las memorias de la niñez y adultez, fantasmas y recuerdos que me vieron crecer. Estoy atrapado en el pasado, up south, en el norte, y con el miedo a cruzar este puente gigantesco al otro lado, donde este lugar que he llamado casa por más de una década se encuentra. Me pregunto, ¿cuánto tiempo durará el polvo, el polvo en asentarse? ¿Cuánto tiempo llevará a crear nuevos recuerdos? ¿Cuánto tiempo para que este sentimiento de extrañeza se desvanezca? ¿Cuánto tiempo para que finalmente pueda sentirme como si estuviera en casa? That's it. That is, I'm going to swear yeah, Jack again, that is everything. That's why, that's why we call them the MV Lee, most valuable Lee. Uh, well, you're on vacation, so you don't have your little paper, I'm assuming. But where can people find you on, on the internet if that's what they want to do? Easiest place is going to be Facebook because it's easier to spell my name. It's Lee Martinez Soto on Facebook. Or Instagram is cadaveres underscore literarios. And I'll put the stuff in the chat. All right. Thank you, Lee. Thank you.
All right, and uh, coming up next, uh, we're going back to our far-flung friends. We're going uh, back up to New Jersey, and we're going to talk with Terry Rose Jertson. Terry, please come up to the stage when you're ready. Hey, I wasn't ready. <laughs> but that's okay. I'll find something. <laughs> I was actually just finished up the um, the book that I'm I'm doing with Marissa, uh, my poetry book. So I just finished up the first draft and I'm so excited to be almost like done. I have the content page to do and then the page numbers, which I have not figured out how to start numbering from kind of like in a weird place in the book. So I need a little bit of help with that. But other than that, it's like, it's good to go. I'm so excited. So this is just something that I wrote the other day. I used to think that no one wanted to hear what I had to say, birthed by years of my parents wanting me to shut up and be quiet. The last thing anyone wanted to hear was my voice pointing out any flaws in the system, the system that systematically dismantled our entire family. I can't remember a time when my parents seemed happy. The fighting was endless and it was crazy. It drove me out of there searching for my own sanity, searching for the dream. I thought I knew what I wanted, but all I wanted was peace and love. I didn't realize that those two things will never be found outside of myself until 59 years later, wishing for another do-over. And then I have this one. Why do people fall in love? Lust is better. In the beginning, it's so great when your heart is beating out of your chest and you guys are texting and thinking about each other all the time and you brush your teeth before you kiss and you shower before you have sex and shave faces and lady parts and everything is so picture perfect. Brand new lacy underwear and new men's underwear, cologne, perfume, and dates. Why do we spoil it all by falling in love? I have no idea. So that's that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Terry. Uh, and where? Terry. And. Uh, <laughs> Where can the folks who live on the internet find more about you if that's what they want to do? Yes. Um, if you want more, um, <laughs> you can message me at Facebook under Teresa Rose Dirtson, or you can find me under iFunnies Mom. That's I F U N N I E Z Mom on Instagram. And um, there's a double feature coming up. Marissa has me featuring with. Um, this woman who I'm, I, she's one of the Fierce 15 um, publishing with me. Her name's S.C. Putnam. And um, it should be fun. And then, we, of course, there's a book launch coming up as well. Um, I can put all that in the chat. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Um, Buzz, no, no more ums. Stop doing that. Uh, coming up next to our stage. We are uh, going to go back to the Beltway, back to DC, because there, there is a uh, fellow who, uh, who has shown us all the way of the rhyme. And it's a way that many could consider divine. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm trying. Uh, I should stop trying to imitate and just let you see the, uh, the uh, item itself. Please welcome Eddie Foreman and Poetastic to the stage. That was yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That was protested, fantastic, majestic, and it was so sick. Ah, ah, kid, you're just a great fit. All right, my name is Ed Potastic, internet fan, fantastic. Please get in touch to join my run for all your feel sublime. All right, I got, I got five jokes and three poems, so you know they're gonna rhyme. The first joke is, what the baker said to his girlfriend, "I need you." I need you by the dozen. What did the squirrel say to his girlfriend? You're driving me nuts. What did the mosquito say about his taxes? They're sucking me dry. What did the bunny say to the other bunny? Do you want to multiply? Okay, last one. What did the chameleon say to the photographer? I was there. 
You just didn't see me. <laughs> all right. I got, all right. First piece is called um, Dear Stranger. Dear Stranger, we've all been there inside the eye of a hurricane, living our worst nightmare or in the rain, drown out the pain. We all know it's not fair. We all have problems with stains. Don't stay bare in an affair. Please unchain the tear stains. Believe me, someone truly cares. No more sprains inside your brain. Don't stay in pair. Someone cares somewhere. That's right. Don't strain of leaving the blood down the drain. All right, I got the one piece of red to open mic. This is called Nightmares Daydream. Oh my God, I'm so late. The bills are due. Oh, Mondays, I hate. I'm weak. Do I have the flu? Stove, hurry up for goodness sake. My boss is going to be a red balloon. Breakfast, expired cake. I'm not complaining. It will do. Cell phone not starting. Give me a break. Bathroom, what did I come into? Laundry is full. Ah, the dirty mistake. Come on, come on. Old, old, new. No! Out the door. Time for make or break. Oh, something smells under my shoe. The nasty things dog eat and make. Wet towels, a bunch, only a few. A wet towel sanitizer and shake, shake, shake. Hope nobody sniff and say, ew. Off to work. Wait, what's that quake? Construction, I need to get through. Oh, my mind and body ache. The work is gonna stick like glue. I'll sick and listen to music while I bake. Stop honking. Get a clue, for God or Buddha's sake, go around their potholes in the avenues. I'm finally here, avoiding the stake. Oh, hey boss, please don't be red or blue. I'm very sorry I was so late. Yes, I have lots of work to pursue. Wait, what's the time? Eight, I think I've been cursed. Is this a daily joke or fate? It's the same thing, but in reverse. I feel like I'm going to fate. If I do that, it's going to be much worse. Welcome, Matt. Where's the key for my gate? Ah, my body's going to burst. Here's the key. Another daydream slash nightmare awaits. I got one more for, for Encore. Uh, this is the last one for fun on, this, on the Potastic Sun. This is called Erica. Oh, Erica, why are you in so much pain and chains? You're not simply free, but bound on your knees. People advertise your image in so many stages. It's really sad because you were never ironclad. The founding father sitting all to the slaughter, the extremists spreading the hate over your state, the rich loving to be greedy, ignoring the needy, the crooked cops love to go pop, 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 the poor victims being names in the system, the old crimes lost in the passing new times, the wars of what the fuck are we fighting for, the pandemic that's kind of, sort of raging havoc. The golden fools being used as mindless tools. The vivid machines cast away our humanity. The noisy guns seem to avoid the trial runs. The smoke clouds never stop breathing so loud. The people are into themselves, yet don't pick up a book on the shelves. Erica, you're everything but red, white, and blue. But what the fuck have they done to you? You're not a girl of opportunity but an old woman with bags of pity. Oh, Erica, it's not your fault for thoughts. You're only the victim of global assault. Thank you. And I would thank um, Nick Pease, AKA Jersey Jesus, a wonderful workshop with a stunt where the fun never stops. <laughs> yeah, Eddie. Woo. All right. A TumbleWords uh, product, a product of the TumbleWords project. Thank you so much, Eddie. Uh, and please tell the people where they can find more of you on social media if uh, sure, no uh, nothing problem. rhymes with media. <laughs> <laughs> media, cinema? No, almost. Media, cinema, media. Oh, oh well, well, I'm feeling ya. <laughs> um, there we go. If you want to <laughs> so, follow. Yeah, oh. t Eddie, tell the people where they can find the, you on social media if they heard that poem and thought to themselves, oh, I'm feeling you. I think. Thank you, my postastic um, host that we love the most. Um, you can follow me. You could actually tune in for Bob Wire, 
every Monday night, which will make you and everyone such a delight. But if you want to follow me, please feel free. You can follow me at Eddie Foreman on Facebook, and you can follow me at Ed Foreman 92 and IG. Remember, if the mic is right, I'll be there to shine my fantastic insight. If you send me a question, if you take a guess, the answer is yes. I hope everyone stay positive, safe, and blessed, and never stop spewing the wonderful words out of your chest, and never stop looking and feeling your best. <laughs> All right. Um, By the way, it's like I'll, when he arrives. <laughs> oh, you're such a, you're such divine. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Eddie. Oh, it's just try to frown when he's on. You can't do it. Science can't explain it. Uh, coming up next, once again, there were like medium stages in our development where we made new friends locally, and we also regained touch with people who were part of the scene but had moved away, uh, such as the next person coming up to the microphone who beat me in a slam when I was very, very young in my poetry career. And I had remained very magnanimous and never held it against them. <laughs> but no one thanks me for that. But please welcome up from Wonder Lake, Illinois. Please welcome Nico Kin to the stage. And Kit, I remember you before even even doing the poetry slam with you. I remember, uh, what was that place, that spot? Um, man, I can't even remember. But we we enjoyed like a drink or two out, outside. It was definitely on the west side. Um, it's like right next black to Orchid. Uh, huh? the Black Orchid. Black, the Black Orchid. The Black Orchid Lounge. Yes, the R. Black R. Orchid Lounge. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So um, first off, happy 100 episodes, B-Womps. You guys are awesome. I'm so happy. Thanks for letting me get on this. Um, I think I'm going to sing a song and then do two poems. When I do the poems, I'm sorry, because I just wrote them. You're not going to see my face with that. I think I sang the song before, but I don't care. I like singing it. <laughs> Whoa, my, oh, my. In a room full of dimes, you would be a hundred dollars. Being fine was a crime. Girl, they lock your little fine ass up in the tower. The way you move like you do. Oh, it's like you do it for a living. Do a little spin. Do it again. Shit. Looks like you play a roll of No, baby. I can keep going, but I'm not gonna. Because I can mess up those notes and I can hit those notes. So I'm not gonna. Uh, which one do I want to start with? Oh, you know, and also speaking of Kit, so Homie Fresh posted this post and I was like, man, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. So this is from Chilean poet Alejandro Zambra. And it, in it, it says, oh, we have better parties, says Rita. These, these can be pretty lame, pretty boring, and they always try to hit on you. Men or poets? Men. Poets too, but I like them better. Poets are more awkward and more genuine. They work with words, but they don't even know how to talk. I've interviewed lots of them, and it seems to me like it seems to me like they know how to talk. They know how to give interviews. They know how to talk about what they do. They'll sell you a little snake oil, but take them away from poetry, and they start stuttering. That's why they write poems because they don't know how to talk. So that was like that that hit my soul. So with that, um, I'm not very good at hitting on girls, so we'll do this. I see. No tengo said pero. It could be said your boy's a tad thirsty, though. For 30 years or so, I've not, ch I've not chased a single dream, deeming such silly things as concepts best kept for my sleep. But when a single dream smiles at me, she, how can I not choose to chase the heart-shaped silhouette that most people hold their breaths to forego the pheromones for? Barren alone, more so my naked-ass soul is already outlined by a reddish tint. An embellished tint elucidating why I stay steady losing dating ships. I guess it's that and because I'd rather write a poem than text some random already line of words you've probably heard countless times before. I'll not ask you to forgive my bardic and mo, but uh, because I am mo, it's the best way to get the information. Mm. <sighs> I'll not ask you to forgive my bardic and mo because I am mo, it's the best way to get the information for who I am. I just hope it's good enough so I can get to know you more too, cause damn. Eres un sueño con el que deseo dormir enteramente. And then my last one. I'd rather drink the water the ships called the ship sailed on it. It further salt it further my salt levels, though. That's the name of the poem. I, I messed it up, so I'm gonna say it again. I'd rather drink the water the ship sailed on. It further my salt levels, though. Damn, she's thick. That's thick with 
three C's. I mean, it's like she's a different species. I need Mr. Meeksies to teach me like how Bacchus was from the Pleiades, how to inspire myself and acquire taste with a grasp of inquiry, but my mental malleability is almost in a retired state. Florida? More ideological inspired eccentric actions, fracturing this non-factoring fuckboy who had the tendency to look at tricks, not backflips, like treats or fuck toys, shucking out this chuckling cuck like corn on a cob who once knew how to elegantly say slob on my knob. I wish to rob or minus myself of Menelaus's mode of meditation, but that as is worth the attention of sending at least a thousand ships. Shit, who wouldn't want to ship it? Hope you guys liked it. Awesome, man. Well, we got Lee complimenting your Spanish in the chat. So very good. Uh, Nico, if the people want to see more of you uh, on social media, whatever, whatever they have, where can they find you? So I'm on Facebook, Nico Kim. Uh, I, I've got a SoundCloud. I think I got like a couple videos on YouTube, but like just Nico Kim all over the place. Um, Nick P, always good to see you. I'm sorry I didn't. I wasn't here earlier. I'm so sorry I wasn't here earlier. I missed. I, I missed Jeff. I missed. But I get to see Matthew. That's what I see. Yeah, I, I get to see Matthew. I get to see Mr. T. Uh, this is gonna be a good night. I look forward to seeing everything. Yeah, exactly. I get to look. I look forward to seeing everybody on uh, YouTube tonight. Love you guys. All right, you get that love back with interest. That's how it works. You give and you get back. It's the only good use of, of economics that I know of. Uh, coming up next, speaking of academic topics, we have, uh, speaking of academic topics, we have one of our favorite uh, lecturers. We have Mr. Tezosomo coming up to the mic. And in addition to his poetry, he likes to troll me with his cover. So I'm sure we'll hear a couple of those as well. <laughs> so Mr. Tezo, when you're ready. All yeah, right. Yeah. I'm going to keep it music today just because Nick is here and I'm going to keep it up with the music. Great. So I have, a, I have a piece in Spanish and I have a piece in English. We'll see, uh, we'll see how trolly you, you feel today. Los caminos de la vida no son como yo esperaba, no son lo que yo creía, no son lo que imaginaba. Los caminos de la vida no son son muy difíciles de andarlo, difíciles de caminarlo, y no encuentro salida. Yo pensaba que la vida era distinta, y cuando era chiquita, creía que las cosas eran fáciles como ayer que mi madre preocupada se esmeraba por darme todo lo que no necesitaba y hoy me doy cuenta Porque a mi madre la veo cansada de trabajar por mi hermano y por mí. Y ahora con ganas quisiera ayudarla y por ella le peleo hasta el fin. Por ella lucharé 
hasta que me muera y por ella no me quiero morir. Tampoco que se me muera mi vieja, pero yo sé que el destino es así. Los caminos de la vida No son lo que yo esperaba No son lo que yo creí No son lo que imaginaba Los caminos de la vida no son, son muy difíciles pasar, difíciles es de y no dentro la salida. There is a composition written in 1992 by uh, Omar Gales, um, Colombian. Um, the, uh, be, it's become kind of the motto or the theme for um, uh, migration. Uh, people uh, typically is a melancholic song about migration and about the remorse of the paths that we take in life. I'm not sure if people knew that. But um, I'm sure uh, Kit likes the cumbia version and not the uh, fragmentary version. Of I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm trying to keep you guys from getting booted by YouTube. Make the song completely unrecognizable. <laughs> Here's my second piece. <clears throat> Getting old, can you feel me, feel me? Hey, you, standing in the aisle with itchy feet and fading smiles, can you feel me? Hey, you, don't you help them to bury the light? naked by the phone would you touch me hey you with your ear against the wall waiting for someone to call out would you touch me hey
But it was only fantasy The wall was too high as you can see No matter how he tried he could not break And the worms ate into his Out there on the road doing what you're told can you help me hey you out there beyond the wall breaking bottles in the hall can you help me hey you don't tell me there's no hope at all Together we stand, divided we fall. Yeah, Mr. Tizzlemack. All right, Kit, how much, how big is your angst? Hmm. <laughs> uh. uh. I'm going to have to think about that. You've given me a lot to think about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, good. But, but <laughs> Mr. Tezazomo, where can the people uh, find more of you if that's what they want to do? Sure. Folks can catch me on Instagram under gashes2019. Uh, had a good day today. I had a piece accepted in Syncopation Literary Journal on music and um and poetry, and that was my uh, hotel in Imperial, Hotel Imperial, the one with Celia Cruz that got, that got accepted and will be published in a couple of months. So that was pretty nice. Uh, and then um, I just released. Uh, I'm going to be releasing on YouTube on YouTube the the two peyote uh, the coyote uh, stumbles on a peyote meeting. I did one in English. And I had a, a lot of demand for the uh, a Spanish version for this our Southern folks. So I did a Spanish version also. So I'll get those out. I think I put, posted the Spanish one on YouTube already. And the other one had already been on Instagram and, uh, and Facebook. So we'll catch that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tess. Good to hear your successes. And coming up next is someone we haven't seen in a few months because uh, he's been making all kinds of changes to his life. He's uprooted from the cornfields and now he's out in Jersey. And we're really excited to hear what he's got to say. Please welcome Matthew Marikin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of changes, I guess you could say. Yeah, I haven't been here in a while. I'm like, damn, <laughs> why has it been so long? <laughs> And it's like late here now, and I'm like, oh, she went the other way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one's so late now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, um, yeah. You're just. Uh, I'm gonna do two things really quick. One, I got an audition on Sunday, and I gotta do like 60 seconds of Shakespeare, and I haven't said this from memory yet, or to yeah, a yeah, crowd yeah. of people. So I'm going to get rid of like the saying it to a crowd of people nerves right here. I'm not going to use a voice or anything. But I'm just going to say it. <laughs> okay. Um, this is from the Tempest, Caliban's uh, good old quote. Okay. If anyone knows that. This island is mine. My cigarettes, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou... Strokes me and made us much of me. What's give me water with berries in and 
teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee and taught thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs, brine pits, barren place and fertile. Curse be that I did so. Uh, <laughs> curse be that I, uh, curse be did that so. <laughs> um, all the charms of Sycorax, toads, uh, beetles, bats light on you. For I am, yeah, dang it, I forgot the rest of it. That's not good. Okay, that's good to know though. I'm just gonna, you know, finish that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read it. Okay. Cursed be I that did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king. And here you sty me in this hard rock, while you do keep me from the rest of the island. Um, I got to memorize the last part. Good to know. Thank you all for listening. Uh, <laughs> uh, Caliban, I think, is most under, like, uh, most in... Um, how do I say this? Most, you know, he was supposed to be signifying like the natives and basically saying like, yeah, colonization is okay because like, look how these natives act. They're savages. And that's why I hate how he was portrayed in the Tempest. And yeah. No respect. Yeah. Whole, whole thing. Anyways, I'm going to read an actual poem that I wrote. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some of y'all probably have heard this. I just wrote this a week or two ago, I don't remember. The writing's been difficult because um, I'm so busy now doing real, like, job stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay, this one's called Immigrant Love. When you're a child of immigrants, you experience the fiercest love in existence. It's a love that pulls you from war, a love that transcends borders, states, nations. It's a love like none other that is immigrant love. But when you're a child of immigrants, your parents sometimes only know how to love certain parts of you. My parents loved him when I did well in school, straight A's, read all the books, varsity athlete, performer on stage, whatever it may be. But I'm afraid that isn't all of who I am. I have ADHD and a lot of times I forget to clean my room and I don't sleep because I'm constantly trying to keep up with my parents deem as good. And then sometimes during that time, I sometimes during that time, I, I look at my little sister, tenacious, artistic, and just as neural, <laughs> um, just as neurally diverse as I, but her grades don't stay high and her anxiety gets the best of her in social situations and she is no poet or athlete and my parents' eyes, oh, in my parents' eyes, that is no good. She is no good unless she can tap into the potential they imagine within her. But that's not who she is. She is sweet and kind and I one time almost gave her a black eye, long story y'all, but we love each other all the same. And I understand my parents' Salvadorian minds, but maybe I just see love through my American eyes because when you're a child of immigrants, you experience the fiercest love in existence. It's a love that pulls you from war, a love that transcends borders, states, nations, but it's a love that's blind to those who are not living the American dream they wished upon their children. At some point, my eyes will close and I will need to sleep. At some point, my little sister will break away from eyes that do not respect hers. Some point, being the child of immigrants means, you know, constantly chasing after a dream that did not come to you. I didn't come how a doctor or lawyer engineer no i'm a poet and i know it an actor a thespian i live my life following a dream my parents never could have never could have my little sister lives her life following a dream my parents never could have we're in this country to succeed which is the only dream i guess my parents did have for us and if you're a child of immigrants the only thing i could tell you is follow your own dream your own aspirations, your own loves. I know it can be scary thinking to stray away when the sacrifices for your success were so high, but you do you when your parents' love will follow because 
because it will follow because I'm not sure if you know, but when you're a child of immigrants, you experience the fiercest love in existence. It's a love that pulls you from war, a love that transcends borders, states, and nations. It's a love like none other. That is immigrant love. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, amazing, right. man. Yeah, yeah. That's what I remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. A lot of love in the chat for that one. Uh, good. good to see you back, Maddie. Uh, where can uh, people keep track of you on the internet as you move about your days? Yes. Um, Instagram's probably the best place. Vida, V I D A underscore, like a hyphen, but lower. And then Maroquin, which is my name right there. M A R R O Q U I N. Like a hyphen, but lower. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it. Okay. Hey, is that a low rider hyphen? It, it is. <laughs> oh, oh, now you're going to do war next week. That's going to really send me off. Them. Okay. <laughs> Enough of that. Uh, we have a few more readers left. In this, in this great night in a series of at least 100 great Monday nights. And coming up next, uh, we have someone who came to us uh, because they were attending something at the New Yorican, uh, the poetry venue in New York City that also did this. And they were part of people as these scenes sort of collided and joined like a spider web. He was one of the first people to cross over to us and we're grateful for it. And we're grateful to see him back. Please welcome uh, Phil Midnight to the stage. How y'all doing, man? It's been a minute. I think I've been on maybe two or three Zooms in the last eight months, trust and believe. Even, even though I host my own open mic on, on Zoom, I don't even perform on it. it. You know, life, 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 like, hey, I'm trying to wean myself back in to the Zoom world, no other place to come to <laughs> Bob Wire. So I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, 100, congratulations to y'all, congratulations. I'm gonna do a uh, two haiku in a poem. Maybe I'll do a second poem, I'm not sure. Um, sexy lingerie, granddad tapped that flannel dress 10 babies later. What is gun control when encouraged to carry? Victim, me or you? <clears throat> Bing Layla, I wish I could speak to you in a native tongue because Black history didn't begin from the Western tip of Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, places along the coast, making the transatlantic slave trade easy. Black men, women, and children taken to pick up and grow white cotton for the master's gold, sold, hung, watched us burn, them white folks in fancy clothes, slave television. Roots, watched by many, but not remotely the beginning of our history. Ari Banjani, I wish I could speak to you in a native tongue because rather than being taught, we should, rather than being taught, we should know our history what we think of ourselves and where we come from. So take a journey, find out what happened before slavery, because we know more about lions, elephants, giraffes, God's creation, although beautiful, but what about the African people? We are more than malnutrition, children starving with flies fly, flying. Never stop to think why the TV and movie screen focus history around Europe or Asia. The time is overdue because from K-12, we were taught about enslavement, colonies, systems that erased our identities. Missing is the true history of our blackness in our children's classes, minimizing gross violence as if we were the cause of riots. Truth be told, there's more to our history than the oppression of suffering. Molu, Molo Onjani, I wish that we could speak to you in a native tongue, sit down on ground as storytellers bless us, the true history of our ancestors, the beauty of Kenya, 
the Congo, Zimbabwe, an adventure in culture where kings and queens sat on thrones, down the path of mental and spiritual transformation, learning about Ghana, the nation of Zulu, Know Thyself, an inscription often written by the Egyptians in their temples, fruit and gold turned into civilizations, pyramids through mathematics well known no, well before any known philosopher. So let us resurrect the spirit of our ancestors because we came from greatness in order to be great. I wish that we can speak to you in a native tongue, tell you more about our history, but because it's not about a land, just a land in which our ancestors were taken from. Can I play with one more? Yes, absolutely. Oh, oh man. I'm dang near nervous. I ain't been on a dog on Zoom in eons, man. Any. Your story is intriguing. You got me thinking, wondering at the possibility how amazing it would be to carry your beautiful all day with me. If I were your bra, I would hold you fixed in size, the size of your cup, experience every bounce whenever we walked. I could cuddle your nipples rubbing next to me, feel you shift from sensitive to erect, soft to tender again. If I were your bra, I would clutch the taste of your moisture, and within the folds of your breasts, I'd inhale your alluring scent, sketch rings around your areola, the, the moment black lace peeks through satin red robe, playing a different game of dress up. If I were your bra, I would never want to be taken off, but if removed, I'd still hold your breast forever. Imagine nations with no boundaries, lather from what little soap that is left. Teasing, tantalizing, stimulating breasts, heavy breathing from smug showerhead liberations, anticipation of a forthcoming fingering, cleansing the most pleasurable places, sending sensations until suds are fully rinsed. My fantasy, a beautiful dream, if I were your bra. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, Phil, it's great to see you again. Uh, please tell the people in our audience what projects you have going and where they can find more of you. Um, I'm, I'm doing, um, I, well, I close my office door on certain days and I do um, workshops in Jersey for high schools. Shh, don't tell nobody. Um, <laughs> um, and finally, I, I've, I've released a number of CDs over the years. I'm finally doing a book. I'm finally doing a book. So, oh my Lord, I'm excited for that. Uh, I do my open mic the second or fourth Wednesday of the month, put it in the chat. You can hit me on IG, Midnight Poet 00. Again, I appreciate y'all, y'all good seeing a lot of y'all I haven't seen in a minute. Much love and respect y'all, trust. All right, trust right back to you. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, coming up next to our stage is uh, uh, another person who's, who was an early adapter and who found us and we are very grateful that, that he found us. Uh, please welcome uh, Gregory Speed, Fire. Grown man speed to the stage. If he's here. Hi. Gregory, are you still with us? I mean, you're alive, obviously, but. I love I love the good uh, seance portion of the, of the event. There he is, yeah. Okay, he's in the chat. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to read? He can't unmute his Oh. Huh. Why is that happening? That's weird. He says he can't unmute. I yeah, unmute. I was I was also trying to enable the or you know as a host you can ask someone to unmute, but it wasn't really uh doing it. Yeah, anything. it just asks, it won't do it for you. <clears throat> So oh, I would recommend, uh, I think this has happened before is probably just like logging in again. Sometimes there's weird hiccups, I guess, even to doing it through the phone. So let's try that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, he'll sign up and back in and we'll hear from him uh, very soon. Uh, so in the, in the interest of stalling, is there anyone else here in the room right now that wants to read that hasn't read or signed up? I was whispering yeah. Han's name, but it, I was muted. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can't shout it because then that's a Star Trek reference. Then that's a whole thing. <laughs> it's been done too many times. <laughs> it's how it happens, though. You know, something starts as a good joke, and then through repetition, it gets grounded. <laughs> well. It's not the first time we've had a technical issue and we've had to talk through it. You know, all sorts of things have happened over the last hundred shows. And we've come through all of them stronger for it, learning new techniques, learning new things to do, learning new ways to keep every, keep everyone active and involved. And still waiting for speed to come to show back up. Um, let's see. You're doing a great job, Kit. Absolutely, man. I'll uh, I'll spit my windblown world one, uh, just because it. I feel like it's been maybe a while since I've performed it here. I don't know, actually. Okay. Uh, well, I we was wait. hoping you would say that because I was afraid to ask. But our <clears throat> fearless leader, Richie Marufo, is about to read. You know, just not even fearless, just uh, unaware. <laughs> uh, this is my love song for you guys. It's called the Chuko Love Song. Windblown world. I am a hopeful romantic, nomadic in his antics, frantic for the flight of words to slam in the heartstrings. Instead, incoherent mumblings become the inept incantations drawn from the abyss of my pen's empty kiss. I have had many poems eaten by the clumsy dance of a backspace button. You on my work in progress. Isn't that all we ever are? See, I want to make music. I want that dark, smoky, aromatic tone that legends like Lester Young, Ben Webster, and Art Lewis painted their masterpieces in when there was nothing left to yearn for, to culminate from meditate and orchestrate inky sonic thumbprints soaked in the lusty allure of dark corridors and light post forever musings of stardust flicker flame passageways 507 a.m the cosmos are crunched and stacks of what have you nonsensical rumblings ruminate on the frothy jazz licked rememberings of your familiar after kiss perhaps <laughs> Perhaps this sensitive heart is penance from a past life. For even a tangential universe such as this can explode a kiss into atomic whiplash. This is your love song. So when life is bringing you down, don't forget that ever essential elemental presence and breath like. I sling freeform bebop impulses into a chuko skyline. Sonic smoke signals that swirl and twirl into the air and become misguided mockingbird melodies in search of its muse. Thick. You. You move sandstorm rebop rememories. Guano yo te vi. Mi corazón bailó. Cuando yo te vi, mi corazón bailó. See, there are 100,000 heartbeats in a day, but the ones that sound like jazz are for you. This is our windblown world, our metaphorical music. All right, cool. That's my poem, and I'm done. Done, son. Peace. All right. <laughs> With a, a little tribute to Patty with the with the <laughs> snap and, and thumbs up. It's great. Shout out, was, Patty. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to chug my... Uh, I made a coffee tequila blanco mix. I'm not hating it. 
goodness. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Gregory Speed is uh, back in the Zoom room with us. Let's see if his sound is working. Gregory, can you unmute? It worked this time. Yes. All right. All right. Well, this right is on. going to be worth the wait. Trust me. Please welcome Grown Man Speed to the stage. What's good, everybody? Um, I'm working on something for a show, a production on the 18th, 19th, and the 20th. I'm attempting to uh, learn this poem. The poem is titled Flowing Embers. You be fire and water, both calm and chaos, the yin to my yang. My head in the clouds, both feet on the ground, you bring such effervescence to otherwise dull moments. You be temple I'd worship with intention and purpose while continually being considered such a beautiful mess. You be fire and water, both calm and chaos, the yin to my yang as I stand in your flames. Inferno lava flows whenever you speak embers. Heat emits with ferocity, lyrics be leaking continually. You lift me up astronomically. I'm reaching my peak. You shield me from storms, your light being abundant. As I seek useful shelter inside of casted shadows, you move effortlessly. Glory be to thee. The most high has blessed me with the sight of you. I see your radiance shining through the clouds. In all of your splendor, all eyes are fixed upon you. As you enter the room, do they really see you? I know I clearly do. With a hue like stained glass, having handled storms and rain, you've lost none of your luster being a temple I'd worship with intention and purpose, bringing the entire package, not just another snack as you slowly pass me by. Surely my temperature rises. Do you even see me? I know I'm not invisible, never attempting to fit in, standing out while standing on my own too, never lacking any loyalty. You tend to spoil me being continually considered absolutely the fucking best. You be fire and water, both calm and chaos. The yin to my yang, my head in the clouds, both feet on the ground. You bring such effervescence to otherwise dull moments. You be temple I'd worship with intention and purpose while continually being considered such a beautiful mess in poem. How was the volume? Seems fine to me. Volume okay. was great. We heard you loud and clear. Great Thank job. You. Uh, is there any, uh, where, where can the people find you on social media if they want to, if that's what they want to do? Right. I'm on Facebook and uh, I'm on Instagram. And I have a book out on Amazon, and that's about it. <laughs> you can DM me on either one of those platforms. All right. Thank you. Well, great to hear you again, Speed. Really great. Thanks for coming out. Okay. Well, uh, I stole Vale's idea from earlier when they called for requests, and I got two requests that match up with what I kind of wanted to do anyway. So I'm going to read a couple of mine, and then we'll call up Dan. But let's see. All right. So by the request of Lee, here's this one with their favorite line in it. Friday night, uncaffeinating myself at the local bar in the company of my best friend, who is also my personal attorney, he has been stood up for the second time this week by the same woman, but won't accept my laughter or my sympathy. At least I'm in the game, Kit. We're worried about you. 
We think you might die alone. But how can I be alone if I have a we? And what a robust and useful we it is. They talk me out of unnecessary mea culpas. They edit my DMs for clarity. They surreptitiously feed me the name of the woman at the end of the bar who has reason to think she knows me. Sorry. You look good. The Cheeseman Industrial Complex will exceed all of its targets this year, thanks to my self-appointed paparazzi. Rejection may still swell and puff like a bee sting, but do you remember what happens next to the bee? I have a nation of friends in places high, low, and hidden. How can anyone think of me as lonely when my love is legion like the Swiss guard, when they are versatile like a Swiss knife, when they are reliable like a Swiss watch, outwardly neutral, but deeply partisan, just like the Swiss. And by the request of Nick Paleologos, this is one that I've titled in the titles is The Reformation. The comedians have renounced rot and transphobia and hatred in general. They have seen their folly, they tell me. They credit me for their damasking moment. They line up and say sorry and thank you as if it is all one word, a chant for newly shaved Hare Krishnas. They have set up this event, the first of its kind post pandemic, to prove their sincerity to me. One approaches the mic and then another. They are all reading aloud from the same worn copy of Capitalism and Schizophrenia by Giles Delois. They pass the one copy between themselves as they all take their turn going for exactly seven minutes each. It has a used tag from a college bookstore. University of Vermont. Charlie the Catamount is just barely smiling at me from the crinkled sticker on the spine. Their faces as they perform are intense, and as the others sit and watch, they are wrapped. One is taking notes. My companion and I retreat to the patio, and by his leave, I smoke my first cigarette in four years. One by one, the comedians follow me out, eager and pleading like seminary students. Is this better? Are we better, Kit? Have we made up for our sins and our wayward lives? The truth is, I don't know. The truth is, I thought I would always have to fight the comedians for saying one awful thing or another. I viewed it as a responsibility that I had to the scene. And the truth is I have a middle management bred paranoia about what it means when a responsibility gets taken away. The truth is I liked to fight the comedians. I liked it so much that I never gave a thought to what victory would look like. The truth is I confess to the one with the notebook I haven't read very much theory. Okay, those are two by me, your host for this evening. And we're coming to the close of our night here at uh, the barbed wire, at the, the B. Walm Shalm, as Ron was so nice to christen us. And there's only one way to close, thanks. And you know him. You, you probably love him. You, in, any, in any case, we respect your feelings about him. Uh, but Dan the Man is up next. Dan, are you ready? Yeah, I'll take it away. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Dan the Man. What's up, everybody? Oh, yeah, it has been, oh, my gosh. It's almost two years since, uh, since Richie um, has... Uh, Finally brought back the BWOMs Vi online and stay at home open mic. And yes, and I, but man, it's almost, it's almost two years now. Um, it was, um, it was 20, almost 23 months ago. It was on April 20th where um, it was the 20, um, it was the 21st anniversary of the, 
um, uh, this is the 21st anniversary of the Columbine um, tragedy. Yes, I'll never forget that. 420 was also the marijuana day. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and someone did someone I was gonna read some poems, but then I got high. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> But it was April 20th. Um, so thank, well, thanks, Richie. Well, we're almost about a month away to marking the two years, uh, two years that Richie brought back the Barbara Open Mic series by online because uh, we were still an, under COVID-19. And yeah, we were still under lockdown, but <clears throat> I'm glad we were able to connect online. Yeah, and then there was Richie, then there was Kit, then was Conrad's Fire, then was Patty, um, then, then there was uh, Adrian Bautista, and a couple of others we know very well. <clears throat> yeah, but for me, uh, Kit and Richie, yeah, we've been there since every single, every single Mondays from the start of April 20th, 2020, well, to 2020, yeah. And ever since COVID-19, we have to, we had no choice but to close down. And finally, <clears throat> and I'm glad we were able to mark this 100th episode. And I got to say, it's a milestone. Yeah. And I'm not from the Yellowstone, but well, we thought the online was on the birthstone of the diamond. Uh, but no, we're on the online screen of the, of the, <clears throat> Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, but the birthstone move. Oh, well, but speaking of birth, speaking of milestones, yep, it stones like with the loan, and yeah, we're in the we're in the miles zone, and yeah, we're still using our phones, but especially the our hearings of our tones, and it sounds like a backbone of the cyclone. Yep, and we're not alone <laughs> in this unknown milestone. <laughs> And what do you think of 100? Yep, it's a grade A, a 100% or like $100 or like a hashtag 100. And yes, 100th episode, 100 miles, 100 kilometers, 100 numbers, 100 books, 100 blocks, 100 street, uh, 100 members, um, or... <laughs> Or 100, whatever, or 100 colors, if you want to call that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but there's something else I want to show you. Speaking of milestones, give me one minute. Hold on. <clears throat> now, this, as you recall back, um, it was. Um, it was uh, twenty. It was um, seven, almost seven years ago. Well, six and a half years. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Yeah, six and a half years ago. I'm all right. Um, you know, this is my 100th episode where I reached a milestone. That, and yes, uh, that day was international. Was uh, National Donut Day. And yes, I ate it in front of, in front of, <laughs> in front of. I was recording. Yeah. Well, yeah. You should check out my 100th episode. Well, and uh, all, and then a few months later in 2016. Oh, come on. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so I think my computer's a bit <laughs> ragged. Hmm. Okay, I think it's sorry. Well, okay, I'll show you this. Yeah, well, have you seen there's a 200th episode, then 300th episode, I was wearing a 306, and then there's the 400th episode, yeah, then there was 500, then there was 600, then was 700, and then just recently, the 800, yeah, the, yeah, those are my, those are my 100 to, to the milestones, and since uh, I'm already 831, which I just did, uh, which I just did a, a birthday tribute to um, to Christine Ponce Diaz, that was 831. So I'm at least uh, 69 logs away till I reach 900. 
and 169 till I reach a maximum milestone of 1,000. So, <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> it's already out. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. So, yep, those are the milestones. Yeah. So I'm gonna say uh, I'm glad we're I'm glad this is a 100th episode of Be Warm, Stay at Home, Open Mic, man. I got to say 100, what, uh, is it how many weeks, uh, how many weeks from the start? Like, um, I, I need to count the weeks, <laughs> but even though it was a whole straight weeks from the start of April 20th to 2020 to March 14th, 2022. And just say, uh, congratulations to B. Wongs and Richie and, and when one and marking 100th episode of of the B Wom Stay at Home Open Mic. So, thank you, Richie, and Kit, and and yeah, we, all three of us. We were there since the very beginning. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, especially um, especially Conrest Fire and um, uh, among others who were there since the beginning, and and for those who came along. And for those um, and more people who came along and, and spent their time here, and well, this is very nice. So, uh, thank you thank, again. Thanks, guys. Okay. And before uh, before I call it a night, yeah, uh, you know what I'm wearing? Yeah. Yep, green. And yes, green. I'll show you. <laughs> mm. Okay. <clears throat> there it is. <laughs> uh, this is the button I was wearing for the past two decades that um that my old classmate Morgan Hahn gave me this. Well, Morgan Hahn Spencer now. <laughs> There it is. Kiss me. I'm Irish. <laughs> I've been holding that button for, for two decades now since. <laughs> but this is very nice. <laughs> and remember, we got to wear green or it's. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> That's right. Sorry about your damn luck. That quote is according to. Hold on. Yeah, the cowboy James Storm from he's a wrestler from he was originally Impact Wrestling. Um, now uh, I believe he got transferred to AEW, but uh, oh well. But that's his quote. Sorry about your damn luck, according to the cowboy James Storm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, this uh, this Thursday is St. Patrick's Day. So wear green. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. All right, guys. Again, happy 100th episode for Be Warm, Stay at Home, Open Mic. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, yeah. Almost two years. Yeah. You've been here. Richie's been here. I've been here. And so has that smoke detector with the low batteries. Now that's the real hero in all of this. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> well, we've we've come to the end of another great night. And before I pass to Richie to officially close it, I just want to say that uh, a platform is only as valuable as the people in it. So mm -hmm. if you're wa if you're mm -hmm. watching, if you're watching, if you performed, if you thought about performing, uh, you are what has made us so successful and so great. And we're just really thankful for all of you. And here's Dan's card. Read it and weep it. Okay, guys. All right, uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, 
and uh, find Dan the Man's Weekly on YouTube. And uh, don't forget to uh, don't forget to uh, find uh, the thirty fifth uh, the thirty fifth bir- uh, birthday trivia number thirty five to uh, Christine Ponce Diaz. And all right. And uh, again, thank you, Kit. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Philip Midnight Curtis and um, a couple of others I know of who managed to share their video birthday shout outs. Thank you. You've been credited. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, Richie. Okay. And all right, guys. Okay, Kit. Thank you. Happy 100. Happy 100th episode being warmed. Stay at home with open mic. All right. That, um, back to you. Thank you, Kit. All right. Let's go ahead and call it a night. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, Dan's as much a part of the scene as the mountains are, and we can do as much about him as we can about the mountains. And, uh, but yes, I'm going to kick it back to our host, Richie, to say good night. Uh, but once again, uh, if you're watching this live or in the near future, thank you so much. You're a rock star. Everyone who passes through here is a rock star. And We'll see you next Monday. And we're back. Hey, perfect. Thank you, Kit, so much. Drop some love in the chat for Kit, our awesome host. Um, <clears throat> it is very easy to, to trust you to be in charge of these nights. Um, that doesn't just go to anyone. And so, you know, lots of love going around here, of course. In April, we are celebrating two years, two year anniversary of doing this. And, uh, you know, I think the reasons why we had to start these because of the pandemic, you know, it's, we're, we're still, you know, monitoring. There's other, other things going on in the world now too, to be aware of, but it's nice to be able to have a space where I get to see you guys. And, you know, when, when you do, ha- when you're a regular and you do have to miss that absence is definitely felt and noted, you know, and uh, it's just great to see everyone's work. What they've been doing, everyone seeing everyone get their work published, and uh, we'll keep doing it. We keep doing it. We keep doing it. All right, so we're gonna be back next Monday for our 101st episode. Uh, I know Khan has asked me to to host uh, if she can host some future episodes, so she'll be back on. And of course, uh, you know Nick as well. As well. So, yo, uh, I want to thank everyone who has watched on YouTube. Those of you who are still here, I'm still looking at at the data here. It's it's streaming. It shows me how many people are watching people who have commented. It's really cool. It's just great to have this community uh, and go and support the other ones. Um, I know people probably stop listening at this point of the show, you know what I'm saying? But if you're still listening, it's great to have you here. Check us. If you're in El Paso, check out our live shows. Uh, we have a couple this week. So tomorrow we're going to be at Mona bar of modern art. Uh, and on Friday, we are going to be at craft rhythm and brews. We have a new listening room which is outside of the, the main room where people order and drink and stuff. So it's actually been nice. The first show was a, a huge success. Uh, <clears throat> that's also going to be a fundraiser with uh, Las Americas Immigrant Advocacy Center. And at the end of the month, we're going to do another fundraiser at Old Cheap Dog Brewery on the 31st, Cesar Chavez Day, uh, for Border Senses, which is the organization that helps support not only Barbed Wire Open Mic Series, but other literary and literacy projects including our our literary journal we did life in the time last year which a lot of people were able to submit and get published through as well as writing workshops for teens called forward and writing workshops for migrant workers and their family members called memorias de silencio um if you want to find out more you can just look up bordersenses.com barbed wire is part is one of those projects we are part of that family so without further ado i'm going to finish this coffee and Wish you all a good night, and we will see you next time. As always, if you're in a Zoom call with us, or if you're watching on YouTube, you're more than welcome to join us for the quote-unquote after party. We just hang out, talk, you know, whatever. It, it gets all over the place, um, <laughs> and it's fun sometimes. Uh, all right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the live stream. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you in the future. You're present. Later. <laughs>